Hey everyone, welcome to HVAC Training in 2020 presented by SkillCat. In this video, we're going to teach you how to become an HVAC technician and also answer every question you have about HVAC training in 2020. So let's dive in. Part one, what's this guide going to cover? What we're going to go into is what is an HVAC technician? What's the job description, salary, day-to-day -day like, etc.? What are your options for HVAC training? And what are you going to learn in HVAC training? In other words, what's the curriculum of the course? In part two, which is going to be a separate video, we're going to cover the best HVAC certifications to start with, tips for succeeding in your HVAC course, COVID-19 and its impact on online training, as well as classroom training, and what you should do after you graduate from your HVAC course. Restart. Welcome to SkillCat's HVAC training in 2020, where we're going to teach you everything you need to know to become an HVAC technician and also answer every question you could possibly have about HVAC training in 2020. My name is Eric, and let's dive on in. So this guide is going to cover a few things. We're going to start off with what exactly is an HVAC technician? What's the salary? What's the job description? And what does the day-to-day -day look like for an HVAC technician? Then we're going to dive into options for HVAC training. And then we're going to finish it off with what we're going to learn in HVAC training. In other words, what are the topics and the concepts that a course traditionally covers? Now, we're also going to do a part two to this video, which I will link down in the description. And that video is going to cover the best HVAC certifications to start with, tips for succeeding in your HVAC course, COVID-19 and its impact on HVAC training, and what you should do after you graduate from your HVAC course. So let's dive right on in. What is an HVAC technician? Uh, an HVAC technician earns about $48,000 per year, according to the Department of Labor, and they're mainly responsible for installing, maintaining, and repairing HVAC systems. Now, there is one important element of the job which I didn't include in this slide, and that is that you're going to interact with the customer. So typically, you'll get a call, you'll go to the customer's house, and then you'll talk to the customer to see what problems they're actually having with their HVAC system. From there, you'll kind of troubleshoot, you'll see what the problem actually is, and then implement a fix. So that is typically what an HVAC technician is doing. So what are some of the ways you can get there? What options do you have for HVAC training? Well, there's really four of them. The first is online training. The second is in-person classes. The third is being self-taught. And the fourth is to have an HVAC apprenticeship. Let's look a little deeper into online training. So some of the pros for online training are that it's really cheap. Generally speaking, the price ranges from completely free, like skill cap, to a couple hundred dollars. In addition to that, the courses tend to be shorter because they're completely focused on getting you out into the field as fast as possible. So you can usually expect to complete an online course in two weeks to about a month and a half. In addition to that, the courses are also very flexible. So if you already have a full-time day job or a lot of other commitments and you can't commit to an in-person class, which has a set time every day, an online course can be great because when you do have time, when you have 30 spare minutes a day, you can dedicate that to the training and move through it at your own pace. Now, online training does have one con and that's that obviously when you're practicing online, you're not necessarily going to get hands-on experience. And SkillCat to actually come up with a unique solution to this problem by doing online simulations. So we basically take situations you will see as an HVAC technician, model them on the internet, and it lets you go through and practice those real-life situations so that when you do get there, you know what's going on. So for example, one of our simulations is how to use a multimeter. Now, maybe you have used one, maybe you haven't, but the simulation basically works by you have to turn the dial to the proper setting, you have to put the wires in the proper ports, and then you have to get the correct readout and record it. And so if you're in the field and you need to use a multimeter, you'll then know how to use it because in essence, you do have hands-on experience. So that's really online training in a nutshell for you. Let's move on to in-person classes. So in-person classes are gonna be pretty similar to what you experienced in high school. There's going to be a lot of structure, which means you're going to have a set place to go to at a set time with a set teacher and set classmates. And it's also going to let you be more hands-on. 
So a lot of HVAC training actually has specific parts to an HVAC system in the classroom. And so that means you can actually see a condenser and work on it before you're in the field. And that can be incredibly valuable as you go through HVAC training. The last big pro of in-person classes is that you can network, right? So the teacher tends to be an experienced HVAC technician and your classmates are all looking to get into HVAC as well. So you can make some great friends and really kind of get connected with the industry through networking in your class. Now, in-person classes do have two big cons. One is that they can be really expensive and that depends on whether or not you go to a community college or if you go to like a private technical school. But generally speaking, the price can range anywhere from $3,000 to I've seen some that are over $20,000. So definitely more expensive than the online route. And the other thing is that they tend to take a lot longer. So you usually won't find an in-person course that's less than six months. And so that can really be a long time for you to get into the field. And some in-person courses go up to two years, right? So you can really be in school a long time, not even in the field working where you want to be and making money. So let's go to self-taught now. <laughs> I'm sure you'd think this is crazy, but self-taught is possible, but I almost never recommend it. On the pro side, it's very cheap because all you have to do is go online, find curriculums of HVAC schools, buy the textbooks, and then go through the textbook yourself doing the answer questions and the practice problems so that you learn the concepts on your own. Now, this can be very cheap if you buy previous edition textbooks, and it can also be flexible because there is no structure. So it's entirely up to you to go through the textbook to read and to practice. Now, obviously the con of this is that it's incredibly hard to have the motivation to go through pages and pages of a dry textbook is incredibly difficult. And honestly, most people end up not actually making it through. So I generally speaking, don't recommend teaching yourself HVAC. The last option for HVAC training is apprenticeships. So the pros for apprenticeships is that you basically get to learn from an experienced technician. Now, obviously this is great because one, you get immediate hands-on job experience. You're learning from someone who's done it all and is basically going to take you under their wing to teach you some of the tips and tricks of their industry. And that's pretty sweet and pretty valuable if you are actually looking to become an HVAC technician. In addition to that, apprentices are usually paid, which we all like getting paid. And some allow you to spend 50% of your time in school, 50% of your time in the field, and some are even 100% in the field. Now, apprenticeships do have some cons. One is that it's competitive. Obviously, it tends to be the best way to become an HVAC technician. And so a lot of people want to get into it. They want to be paid to learn and to learn from the best people in the industry. But generally speaking, that's very competitive and very difficult to do, especially if you have no experience. So what I always tell people is go take an online course that lasts two to four weeks. You'll get some experience and concepts under your belt. Generally speaking, they'll help you get some certifications. And then you'll feel far more competitive when you go to apply for apprenticeships. So what does the standard curriculum look like for HVAC training? Well, for this video, I actually just ripped our HVAC training curriculum off of SkillCap's website. So you're going to see a lot of it actually has to do with safety. And that's really where the first things start. Obviously, as an HVAC technician, you're dealing with refrigerant, you're dealing with wiring. And so there's hazards to the job, which if you aren't safe and careful, can actually be pretty detrimental to yourself. So the first three sections focus almost entirely on safety. And then after that, we're going to get into some fundamental math concepts like, you know, arithmetic, algebra and geometry, graphs, charts, tables, things like that. And then after that, we're going to start diving into kind of taking measurements, right, which is obviously pretty important. And it's basically going to start off with heat fundamentals and then how to use thermometers and the tools you're actually going to use on the job to take measurements. From there, we're going to go to essential tools and equipment. We're going to go over fabrication and tubing tools, digital electric meters, thermostats, duct systems, and pretty much every other tool you're actually going to use on the job. And from there, things actually start to get exciting. We move into installation, which is what you're going to be doing a lot of the time when you start as an HVAC technician. So we're going to go over installing ducting, how to use thermostats, humidifiers, air cleaners. How do you install all three of those? How do you do field wiring and gas furnace installation? 
and several other things which are going to make you prepared for when you get a job and you head in to install some new HVAC systems. The last section is on preventive maintenance. So plan maintenance concepts, design considerations, because a lot of the HVAC job is going to be going and maintaining these systems that people have in their homes. And so that is a typical HVAC training program. And if you go through something like that, you'll be very prepared when you actually do get out into the job market. So what are the best HVAC certifications? Best HVAC certifications to get after you graduate tend to be OSHA 10, which is basically a construction safety certification and actually transfers across a lot of technical trades. So that tends to be one which is crucial. The next one, which is also crucial, is the EPA 608 Universal Certificate. So this basically says you're safe to handle refrigerant and high and low pressure systems. It's actually broken up into four separate tiers, but for HVAC, it's standard for you to get the Universal Certificate, which basically means you can work on any system. And the last one I recommend as you graduate is to get the NATE Ready to Work. The NATE Ready to Work is basically a 50 question exam that goes over the concepts you just learned in the course and proves that you actually know the material. So if you have those three things and you've gone through a course as you get out of the job market, you're going to be really competitive. And then after you've been in the market for six to 12 months, I recommend people get the HVAC support technician certificate. And that basically is another step towards getting your professional license, but it can look great on a resume, especially if you're deciding to switch jobs and move to a new company in HVAC. So COVID-19 tips for succeeding. COVID-19 has basically forced most HVAC training to be online. And so if you're used to in-person classes or you've never done an online class before, I wanted to take this time to give you some tips to make it a better experience. The first thing I would say is get social. Obviously in an in-person class, you have classmates that you can reach next to, you can talk to them, you have a teacher who you can raise your hand and ask questions with. In an online class, a lot of that falls on you to create. It can be sending emails to your classmates. It can be setting up a Zoom meeting with your teacher or with a couple of your classmates to study for a coming test. And that really is what makes it more of an organic and better experience for people who are doing online HVAC training. The second thing that I always recommend is to create a routine. Pick a time each day that you can dedicate at least 30 minutes to your online HVAC training. Since there is no set time that you have to be there, it's never going to get done if you don't take the initiative to schedule out some time each day to actually work on it and progress your training. So I always say at least 30 minutes at the same time every day if possible and do it every day of the week, and you're going to make great progress if that's how you do it. And if you want even more tips for succeeding, obviously, in a different situation, you can check out our article for even more of them. So you've graduated. Now what do you do? Well, first thing, I know I mentioned it before, but go get your certificates. If you just graduated an online course, go get your OSHA 10, get your Nate ready to work, and your EPA 608 Universal. Those are big, and if you have those on your resume and an online HVAC course, you're going to be looking pretty great and a competitive candidate for most job positions. Next, see if your training company will actually help you get hired. So Skillcat has partnered with a lot of leading HVAC companies, to basically help you get a job once you graduate from our program. And other things, other companies have done a similar thing. And so that may be if you're in an in-class program, they may have career advisors who can help you or introduce you to some companies. So see if the training company can actually help you get hired. And the last thing is put out your resume. I know it's the oldest trick in the book, but if you send your resume around the course you've taken, the certifications you've gotten, whatever hands-on experience you have, you're going to look competitive after you put in all this work, I promise. And since HVAC is experiencing a huge shortage in workers, there's not that much competition for you to go up against. So put out your resume, and I promise you, eventually you're going to get a result that way. So thanks for tuning in, guys. If you are interested in SkillCat's online HVAC program, I know I mentioned a few times in this that it is completely free. You can find more in the link down below. And I appreciate you guys taking the time. Good luck on your HVAC career and HVAC training.